I'm talking today to UK coach and mentor Sally Glover. Hi, Sally. How are you? Hello. I'm wonderful. Thank you, Jo. Sally, today we're talking about the 12 habits of highly effective women. So let's start off by saying, why do you think men find it easier to promote themselves than women do? Men find it easier to promote themselves than women because from a very young age they have been trained to do that. So uh, at a very young age, the, the, the way in which we're encouraged to, um, if you think about the chores that we're given as children, this is, I find this really interesting. So uh, little boys are given, you know, wood chopping, car washing, snow shoveling, you know, quite quite masculine chores. And, and little girls tend to kind of do the housework related chores around the house and helping mummy with baking and cooking and things like that. And very interestingly, um, little boys um, at an earlier age can start getting paid for these jobs. So neighbours, you know, other people in the local area will start paying a, I don't know, 13 year old boy to go and shovel their snow or do some gardening jobs or whatever. It tends to be a little bit later for girls that they'll get paid for, for the work they do, it tends to be kind of babysitting. You know, normally 16, 17 would be an age where you entrust your children to a neighbour's child. So from a very young age, but boys get used to being financially rewarded for their efforts, whereas girls don't. So they get used to asking for stuff. They also play games um, that require them to, to make up their own rules and, to, and to, to kind of fight with one another to win, you know, whereas girls are taught to play nicely. So this translates over into our business lives when we're older. So boys find it much easier just to, to it's a sport for, for, for men. So it's a sport, negotiating, they'll kind of battle it out, tough it out, ask for this, you know, go be cheeky, ask for a bit more, and then go down the pub together. Whereas for women, we want to preserve the relationship. We worry about offending the other person. Um, and we don't want to be seen as pushy or arrogant or, um, you know, that we, that we love ourselves too much. So, so we, we, we hide back and wait for the it. Now, you run a program called Scarlet Program where you talk about the 12 habits of highly effective women. Tell me a little bit about um, some of these habits. Sure. So the, the 12 habits have come from uh, my own uh, 15 years of studying personal development, neurolinguistic programming, ancient philosophies you know, new, new contemporary training methodologies, all related to kind of positive, empowering change. And, uh, and so I pulled together some themes that kept emerging. I kept seeing the same themes, and I know when I live from a certain place, I'm much more powerful and effective, confident, able to ask for things, um, able to, to burst through procrastination or feeling stuck. So I pulled together 12 habits that, that I know when I live and breathe from them, I get the best out of myself um, so, so one of those that this one relates a lot to women is, um, is giving up waiting for the right time thinking you have to be perfect and the idea that you're not quite ready taking small steps in the right direction every day and saying yes now I love that habit and again this is so pertinent to women we think we have to be perfect before we take the action or the step um, and, you know, bad news, ladies, if we wait to be perfect, we'll be perfectly dead. So you've got to just kind of put the foot forward and polish stuff up along the way and get used to, it, you know, never being, give up perfectionism, really. Um, but again, we use this as an excuse not to get on with stuff because it keeps us in our comfort zone. Oh, I'm just polishing it up and making it perfect. So that's one of my favorite ones. Um, and another one, this one's really pertinent to women, is about saying no, meaning it, and asking for support. So giving up micromanagement, silencing the inner control freak, so that we can do less and have more. And again, guys are experts at this. Guys have really learned to put in a good, good, good piece of work, but actually the, the biggest um, crux of what they do is then to promote that work, you know, um, and get other people doing things. There's no, no qualms at all getting everyone else galvanized uh, and doing stuff. So yeah, I work with women to take that habit on and start being kind of calmly, uh, taking the range from, from a more, more remote position. Tell me a little bit about how the program works and who it's specifically aimed at. 
Sure. So uh, the program is aimed at uh, highly motivated women. So this is for people that know that they're on a path, they want to achieve their dreams and could benefit from the support of a team of cheerleaders and a mentor and some good habits and distinctions to, to come from. Uh, it's a three-month program. We kick it off uh, with an event called the Motivational Makeover and another event that I have called Ladies Launch. So one of those two avenues is the entry point. We get very clear on people's, on women's goals, so the real goals, like the ones from the heart, not the what I should be doing. Um, and then from there, there's a, a daily online forum, which is private and secure. Um, and we, I issue one of the 12 habits uh, once a week. And then we live and breathe and come from that particular habit every single day for the whole of that week. And as a team, the online platform is amazing. So the whole team really support each other. It's a very authentic place where people share what they're dealing with and what's difficult about this week's habit or where they have where they've broken the habit. And we just really rally around each other and support one another. Um, and then people have uh, one to one coaching once a fortnight where we'll either be working on business goals and, and getting more clients and tidying up the website and all the things that need to happen, or getting up the career corporate ladder, depending on what that, that, that goal was. Sally, just one final question. What do you think the key is um, to, you know, to maintaining your motivation, to, to, to keep it ongoing um, once you've finished a course or something like that? Yeah, really great question. Uh, well, it's all about the habits. So um, I, I'm a big fan of the positive psychology movement and, um, and have studied a lot about that. And it's, it's proven in science. It's the tiny little things that you do. So I, I always talk about um, showering with success in the morning. So getting up, getting out of bed and making those first five minutes, ten minutes count. So being in the shower, and rather than the little voice in your head kind of like, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, or I haven't done this, I haven't done that, and immediately setting your day up with all this like noise and, and being hard on yourself, the, the, the shower is a perfect opportunity to get clear about all the amazing things that are coming up, to acknowledge yourself for what's working, um, you know, and to be, be kind, be kinder to yourself. That, that kind of setting up of your day will, will make the whole rest of the day it's much easier then to do the things that you said you would do. And, and I really cannot emphasize enough the uh, having having people around you that are, you know, supporting you, cheering you on, and holding you to account, publicly declaring your scary goals, and then having a team of people that you'd be embarrassed if you didn't fulfill on it, and also you will hold your hand when you want to bail out and you want to sell out. Thank you, Sally. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome.